Phil, have you seen this? What? This advert here in the personal column between surgical appliances and vasectomy without fuss. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> company director, uh, early 40s, cultured, sophisticated, lover of the arts, good food and travel, seeks female of similar background, object matrimony, reply box 696. Yeah. Says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. It certainly does. Yeah. You know, I feel sorry for people like that. You feel so, what do you mean, free so company director, cultured, sophisticated, primal life, he's got the lot, mate. <laughs> They'll all be reaching for the scented notepaper when they read that. <laughs> Women find this sort of bloke irresistible. Then why does he have to advertise? Well, perhaps because they don't know about him. Maybe he's uh, shy and retiring. He doesn't sound shy and retiring. He says he's cultured and sophisticated. He seems to have a high opinion of himself. Yeah, there's no point of being too modest, is there? I mean, if you're selling pork pies, you don't hide them in the back of the shop, do you? Put them out on display. <laughs> yeah, that's all he's doing, he's putting his pork pies in the window. We're not talking about pork pies, Riggs. We're talking about women. And if he's so cultured and sophisticated, why can't he get one in the normal way? No, what do you know about the normal way where you come from? <laughs> when you want a woman, all you do is go out and give him a quick burst on the drums. <laughs> no, we don't. Give us credit for a little finesse, Rigsby. Oh, all right. What do you do, then? Oh. Well, we paint ourselves all over in white stripes, hiding the bushes, making little whooping noises. When they come down to fill their water jars, we leap out on them. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? Cover yourself with white stripes and... He's a company director, mate. Oh, that'd go down anywhere with his board, wouldn't it? Yeah, I could just see him. Excuse the white stripes, gentlemen. Just off to the laundrette to leap on a few women. <laughs> <laughs> They'd have him inside in no time. At least it would be more direct. You'll never get the right one this way. Of course he will. Hey, listen. You never heard of mail-order brides? Oh, yes, in the days of the Empire, they did it all the time. All those planters stuck out in remote outposts. Young men in the full vigour of manhood, never the sight of a white woman. Oh, yes. Sitting there night after night, listening to the same cracked record of tea for two, wondering whether to go native or dance with a houseboy. <laughs> they had to do something, otherwise they'd have snapped. So what they used to do, they used to write home for a bride, giving the full requirements. And she'd come up river with the grand piano and a roller liner. <laughs> then they'd live happily ever afterwards. How do you know that? Well, because they both knew exactly what they were getting, you see. It's the same with this fellow. He's given them a very clear picture there. It's all in black and white. How do we know it's a clear picture? How do we know he's not some poor wretch who lives a miserable existence in a back row? Of course he's not. How do you know? I know he's not. You can't be sure. Of course I can. How? I put it in. <laughs> you rich boy. You're not a company director. You're not early 40s. You're not cultured. And you're not sophisticated. Well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> There's not a word of truth in it. Well, you have exaggerated a bit. And there's something else you've forgotten to mention. What's that? You say there, object matrimony. Right. You're married. Ah, yes, yes. Well, you may put your finger on the one small smack there. It's quite right. <laughs> yes, but I shan't be married for very much longer. Filed my petition this morning. Yes, should have done it years ago. A few months from now, free man. <coughs> what about Miss Jones? What about her? I always thought when you got to freedom, you two would get together. No, no, no. I've got to face it, Phil. For some strange, unaccountable fact, I just don't turn her on. I don't know what it is. It's right. <laughs> I told her I was getting divorced. I said I was thinking of settling down. I couldn't have made it plainer. I told her I was looking for the older, more mature woman. What did she say? Offered to put me in touch with the over 60s. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's no good. That's why I put this advert in. You see, it's no good hanging about any longer, is it? I'm not getting any younger. You are, according to that. You're about 15 years younger. <laughs> I don't want him to think I'm decrepit, do I? Uh, when I get the right reply, I'll meet her in some uh, some romantic spot, you know, some oldie worldy pub, perhaps, with a uh, fire blazing in the hearth, horse brasses on the wall, our eyes meet across a crowded room. She makes a dash for the door. I could <laughs> mean. Look, you've got to face it, Rigsby. She'll be expecting someone much younger. Uh, yeah, but I carry me age well, though, you must admit. I mean, it's an interesting face. It's got character. I mean, look at that profile. Classic. I mean, yes. I mean, you must admit, this face has been lived in. It looks as if it's been snapped in. <laughs> All right, I may not be as young as I was, but there's more to love than just the physical side, you know. There's such a thing as a spiritual attraction. Have you thought about that? It was my trouble in my younger days. I never gave it a minute's thought. I was too, too worried about a pretty face and a well-turned ankle. I never, never thought about discussing art, music, literature, the decent things of life. Perhaps if I'd done that, I might have found someone decent, eh? I didn't know you felt like that, Rick. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were looking for that sort of affinity in a woman. Of course I am. That and a decent pair of knockers. <laughs> <laughs> a decent pair of knockers? You don't change, well, do you? Well, culture's all lovely. You can't discuss Etruscan vases all night, can you? <laughs> no, I like my women well stacked. I like them with a bit of this and a bit of that and plenty of the other. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's the best sort of exercise for that. Uh, but it's still just discussing stiffness. Uh, and, uh, What's the matter, Ruth? Have you seen this, Philip? 
company director, early 40s. <laughs> yes, I've just been reading it, as a matter of fact. I wonder what sort of person he is. I see him bronzed by travel, steel grey hair, well manicured hands, expensive clothes worn with a casual air, probably sitting alone in a hotel suite listening to Beethoven. I wouldn't get carried away, Ruth. He could be quite ordinary. What do you mean, ordinary? Well, broken fingernails, old cardigan sitting in a back room listening to the art. <laughs> oh, don't be ridiculous, Philip. I mean, does he sound like that sort of person? No, he's probably spent his whole life making money, and now he's asking himself the question, what's it all for? I think he's lonely. I think he needs someone. I think you're right. But who's going to reply to something like that? You'd have to be desperate. Yes, I suppose you're right. You haven't got a first-class stamp, have you? <laughs> you're not going to reply to it. Well, why shouldn't I? Aren't you taking a chance? I feel like taking a chance, Phil. I'm tired of waiting for life to knock on my door. I've got to get out there and pitch. But he could be anyone. Suppose you don't like him. Well, I thought of that. I didn't give my name and address. I just suggested somewhere that we should meet. Did you give any personal details? Well, only a brief description so that he'd recognise me. You know, slim, attractive, <laughs> late twenties. Cool, self-possessed, with a sort of roguish smile. Do you think that's enough? I should think that'd be more than enough. Oh, you're expected to exaggerate a little, Phil. I should know. I've been through all this before. Really? Yes, I went to a matrimonial agency once. They put me in touch with a fun-loving extrovert with an urge to travel. He sounded fine until I found out he was doing five years in Parkhurst. <laughs> the next one was better. In fact, he was quite nice. What there was of him, the trouble was he only came up to my shoulder. The first time I saw him, he was sitting on a bar stool. How he got up there, I'll never know. <laughs> we had several martinis and we talked. Oh, it was so romantic until it was time to leave and I had to lift him off the stool. Must have been a big disappointment. Well, it was, but even then I thought there was a chance. I really tried. I tried so hard I developed a stoop. You see, he was so sensitive about the fact that I was taller and he wouldn't dance with me because we kept walking into the tables. And of course, he was, he was too proud to look under my arm. <laughs> I, I tried to reassure him. I kept telling him that small was beautiful. Did he believe you? Yes, as a matter of fact, he did. He stopped thinking he was beneath me. Well, of course, he was beneath me. I mean, a long way beneath me, but I didn't mind. Then one night I forgot. I made this disparaging remark about Napoleon. He got very angry, jumped off his cushions and left. <laughs> Never saw him again. Oh, dear. But this time, I think it's going to be different, Phil. I'm sure it will be. All I'm saying is don't raise your hopes too high. Be prepared for a slight disappointment. Remember, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Oh, I do agree, and I can't wait to behold him. <laughs> I think we're to like each other. Don't laugh, Philip, but I think I know him already. <laughs> oh, hello, Phil. Uh, well, oh, how many replies did you get? Oh, <laughs> you'd be surprised. How many? <laughs> Uh, one. I thought you were expecting a sackful. Well, I told him not to put it down among the surgical appliances, didn't I? I mean, you're not looking for a future husband among the body belts, trusses and air transplants, are you? They're looking for a replacement, not spare parts. But, hey, what a reply this is. Eh? Oh, I smell that expensive perfume. Oh, make your shirt roll up your back, doesn't it? <laughs> hey, look at that stylish hand, eh? Look at that. She didn't leave school at 14. Look, look. I before E every time. Uh, and, and look at that, writing without lines. <laughs> you can tell she's got breeding. I see it isn't signed. Uh, no, of course. You don't expect a woman of quality to identify herself to a box nobody. Of course it's not signed. For all she knows, I could be the Phantom Flasher. No, no, no. <laughs> now, what she wanted is she wanted to observe me first before she reveals herself. Oh, yes. But once she sees I've got all the social graces, I can move in any social strata, I shall be away. <laughs> what are you going to talk about oh, when you meet? Don't you worry, mate. I shall be at a loss for words. I've been watching Melvin Bragg. You see, it doesn't matter what you say as long as you don't split any infinitives. That's the main thing. Don't worry, I shall be at a loss for words. I can charm the birds off the trees when I want to. <laughs> you pin back your lug holes and listen to this. You won't recognise me. She's given me this number to ring. It's probably a muse flat. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, uh, what a delightful voice. Yes. Only you could have written such a charming letter that I've read, reread, and keep close to my heart. Yes. I, 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 I was wondering where we could meet. You want the gas board? No. Oh. <laughs> Must be the maid. Never mind the gas board, love. Put your mistress on. What? We're in a coal box. Oh. Well, look, is there a lady outside? A slim, attractive, late 20s, probably wearing a sheepskin coat and a tweed skirt. 
Got skinny bird with a plastic mac and a shopping bag. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on, will you? Yeah. Using a call box, yes, yes. Probably extra directory, doesn't want anyone coming round pinching the old masters. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Uh, 696 here, yes. I was, I, I, I was wondering where we could have, uh, have a rendezvous. <laughs> Yes. Uh, lunchtime suit me, absolutely suit me, yeah. George, yes, I know it very well, yes. I often get in there. You can always see me in the corner with the estate agents, yes. Yes, you can easily pick us out. We've all got leather patches, yes. <laughs> On our jackets, yes. <laughs> We're always taking down the hunting horn, giving it a bit of a blow. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, no, 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 I have my serious side as well. I love poetry. I say I love poetry. <laughs> Poems, rhyming, you know. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Do I, uh, do I know who love? John Bitumen. I, I don't know. Does he drink of the George? <laughs> oh, that, oh, that John Bitumen. <laughs> yes, I can see we've got a lot in common. How old am I? Well, uh, early 40s. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> yes, it's the Mediterranean cruises do me a deal of good. Yes. Tall. Um, Tallish. Rangy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ah, yes. How will we know each other? Good point. Yeah. Carry a copy of the Daily Telegraph. What a good idea. You could make it a mirror, could you? <laughs> How about if we both wore a pink carnation? That would be so romantic, wouldn't it? Yes, right. Well, I'll see you at the George at uh, one. Right. Super. See you at the bar. They have some very nice pickled gherkins there. <laughs> Are you going to talk like that all the time? Yes, why not? You'll give yourself a hernia. <laughs> you worry about that, mate. Right, I better nip out and get me pink carnation. Oh, well, I've got to get ready. Oh, right, I think this calls for total immersion. Yes, a long soak of the bath crystals. Oh, hey, what a voice. <laughs> Refined, but underneath, I bet she's a real raver. <laughs> yeah, a real touch of the Lady Chatterley's there. Well, don't expect too much. You haven't seen what she's like. Oh, don't worry, mate. I shan't wear my carnations. I'll have had a good look at her. Yes, but I'm not worried with a voice like that. <laughs> You're all going to get a bit of a shock around here, you'll see. <laughs> Including Miss Jones. <laughs> Mother's Ruin and a bottle of your very best slimline. <laughs> Do we hear the tinkle of ice cubes? Perhaps a slice of lemon? You wouldn't like a cherry as well, would you? Yes, I would. <laughs> That'll be 82p. 82 p <laughs> I'm past those crisps, Dan. I'm famished. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, where's a little plastic sword? We haven't got any little plastic swords. No, little pla I always have a plan. My God, this place is certainly going to the dogs, isn't it? That's it, then. No, it isn't it. I'm looking for a young lady. Aren't we all? <laughs> Could we have a bit more civility, please? Just as well you weren't here in the old coaching days. You've had a gentleman's glove in your mush. Is, is that when you used to come in, then? I don't... <laughs> I have arranged to meet a young lady here, slim, attractively twenties, roguish smile, probably wearing a twin set pearls, very refined. Have you seen her? Oh, you must be the chauffeur, eh? <laughs> I beg you, I'm not the chauffeur. I haven't got time to bandy words with the likes of you. I'll go and find myself riffraff. <laughs> This place? No, no, I don't. I'm, I'm just waiting for a friend. Uh, yes, so am I. Yes, oh, yes. yes. You, you, you wouldn't like a drink, would you, Miss? Uh, no, I don't normally drink. That's all right. No, it's all right. No, it doesn't matter. No, that's all right. <laughs> don't want to pressure. It might upset your metabolism if you're not used to it. Yes. Do you come here often? Uh, yes, yes, you could say this is one of my horns. Yes, I think you'll find most of the. Uh, what do you mind? I think most of the staff know me here. Yes. Well, if you excuse me, excuse Mr. me, Mr. I just. Uh, just uh, oh, yes, 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 right, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. 
<laughs> well, darling, how does it feel to be Mrs. Smith? Oh, absolutely wonderful, darling. I'm so happy. Oh. Oh. Uh, two of the usual, please. Have we got time for a drink? Oh, I think so. They won't be here yet. You look after the drinks. I'll go and see if the room's ready for the reception. Um, darling. Darling. <laughs> My word, you're early. I couldn't wait. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, good heavens, how did you guess? My favourite aperitif, a dry martini shake and not stand. <laughs> Actually, it's a vodka and lemon. Is it? Mm. Oh, those cheese and onion crisps play havoc with your taste buds, don't they? <laughs> you certainly didn't waste any time getting uh, here. I don't believe in hanging about. I'm a man of quick decisions, impulsive, ready to hazard everything on the throw of a dice. May I propose a toast? A toast? A, a toast, toast, toast. A toast to love. Love at first sight. How nice. Mm. To love. To love. Yeah. <laughs> you must be the first. What do you mean they're going to be lovers? <laughs> Yes, there'll be quite a crowd. I don't like the sound of that. Well, you know how it is. Once you start asking people, oh, don't worry, there'll be enough to go round. <laughs> I'm quite sure there will. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'm not complaining about the competition, but do remember, I was here first. Anyway, now I am here. What do you think? I beg your pardon. Don't be taken in by this air of cynicism and the world-weary manner. I may be a little born at the edges, but I'm quite capable of making a young woman happy. Yes. Am I what you expected? I don't know. Who are you? Who am? Who am? <laughs> Company director, sophisticated, cultured, early 40s. Surgical appliances. That must be very interesting. Oh, yes. I'm not saying it's not been an interesting life, but I've not had much time to mix with the opposite sex. I've lived in a man's world. Yes, it's I a, can imagine. Well, I knew you straight away, slim, attractive, late 20s, roguish smile. Thank you. <laughs> what you doing tonight? What? What you doing tonight? Are you serious? Of course I am. Come back to my place. Whatever it is, put it off. Come back to me. It's out of the question. Of course it is. And when opportunity comes like this, take it with both hands, my dear. Come on, fill your boots. What do you say? What do you think you're doing? Oh, I'm sorry, mate. I was here first. <laughs> is he being a nuisance? No, I'm afraid you're being the nuisance. I'll get rid of that pink carnation of you. She obviously prefers the older man. <laughs> I've been watching him. He's been at her all the time. Do you mind getting back to polishing your glasses? I'm having a chat with a young lady here. How would you like a punch on the nose? Now, There's no need for that. No, there's no need for that. Will you go away and stop annoying me? Me? No, you, you can't prefer him to me. Oh, look at him. A callow youth like that. Look at those shifty eyes. I think you're making a big mistake there, love. He's my husband. Is you what? What? Well, why, didn't you say, why didn't you mention that in your letter? What letter? The letter she sent me. I didn't send any letter. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What's this about a letter? Surely you don't believe him. All I know is we've been married one hour and I find you an intimate conversation with a man who says you've written him a letter. Uh -huh. And you believe him. So this is what married life's going to be like. Uh, Jealousy and suspicion. Yeah. Oh, dear, but darling, um, excuse me. Certainly. Right. Darling, darling. Oh, Case of mistaken identity. Oh, yes. One of those little ironies of fate, you know. Yes, well, we don't like that sort of thing in here. Yeah. When you said you were looking for a young lady, I didn't realise you meant any young lady. Yeah. Could you let me have to watch it? <laughs> Could you let me have a double, uh, 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 half a bitter? <laughs> oh, um, excuse me. Uh, have you seen a young lady wearing pink carnation? Oh, you've come at last. <laughs> I'd almost given you up. Oh, oh you, you, you shouldn't be in here. We've got a private room. Private room? Wasn't that rather impetuous? Oh, well, it's not every day one gets a wife, is it? No, that's very true. Mm. You know, they've made masses of sandwiches. Don't know if we'll be able to eat them all. Oh, I don't think I could eat a thing. I'm far too excited. You certainly know how to do things in style. Do you know you're much younger than I expected? Oh, well, thank you very much. It's probably all those Mediterranean cruises. What? Good heavens, you could be my age. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking she looks older than I expected. Oh, no. I've no, always no. looked older than my years. It's this worried frown. I've had it since I was three. We had a very insecure pushchair. The wheel kept coming off and throwing me into the road. How tall are you? Um, oh, about six foot. I thought so. Very broad and manly. <laughs> Shall I get you a drink? No, please don't. I don't want to down my senses. I want to savour this moment to the full. Our first meeting. What are you doing? Uh, I was looking for you. You weren't. You'd forgotten all about me. You're holding her hand. Well, why shouldn't he hold my hand? Oh, no, he's not meeting you as well. Good heavens, how many of us are there? 
Sir, no wonder you're providing sandwiches. It's worse than Miss World. <laughs> I'd keep away from him if I were you. This man's an absolute philanderer. He's my husband. What? You didn't mention that when you rang me up. Have you been ringing this woman up? Certainly not. You fibber. You've obviously been deceiving us both. I should have known. Mummy was right about you. Yes. Oh, yes. What's the old battle axe been saying? <laughs> Don't you call my mother a battle axe. She certainly saw through you. She said you were obsessed with it. With what? I saw the way you were kissing the bridesmaids. You completely crushed their taffeta. <laughs> no, I didn't. Don't you ever speak to me again. Well, darling, happy is the blind. What does it feel like to be married? Oh, mummy! <laughs> you monster. Well, what have I done? I don't know. But that girl went out this morning without a care in the world. Now look at her. Why couldn't you have waited till you got to Mallorca? Things always look better when the sun's shining. <laughs> Good heavens, we haven't even cut the cake yet. I warned her what it would be like, but I'd no idea it would start when you got in the taxi. My poor lamb, what have you done to her? It wasn't me, it was that man. What man? Well, he was a sort of slimy, lecherous individual. <laughs> That's him. He pretended to be one of the guests, and then he accosted her. Accosted her? On her wedding day? Is no one safe anymore? We'll see about this. <laughs> I'd like a word with you. Oh, there you are, about time. Yeah. Oh, come <laughs> on. When you said early 20s, I didn't know you meant 1920s. I beg your pardon. Well, I'm afraid this puts a very different complexion on things, love. No wonder you're late. I'm surprised you didn't wait for it to go down. What? Still, I suppose I can't complain. I did exaggerate a bit myself. At least there's plenty to get hold of. <laughs> yes. What about coming back to my place? I'll draw the curtains, eh? They say the best wine comes out of old bottles. Well, you vulgar little man. How dare you? I've never been so insulted in my life. I should get out more. <laughs> you're drunk. Just... I should have walked into That was a case of mistaken oh. identity. <laughs> so... Oh, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Surgical appliances. Surgical appliances. <laughs> oh, Miss Jones, are you still here? Oh, yes, Mr. Rixby. Uh, your friend uh, didn't turn up then? No, no. Did yours? Uh, no, 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 I don't think so. No. <laughs> I think life's leaving me by, Miss Jones. Well, I feel the same way, Mr. Yes. Rixby. Like that song, standing at the station and the train's done gone. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, there we are. Mr. Rixby. Hmm? <laughs> oh, you're not single, attractive, late twenties, roguish, smile by any chance. You're not comfortable directly early quarters, not really. <laughs> roguish smile, you've been reading Woman's Own again. Sophisticated. <laughs> if you're sophisticated, what's the pickle jar doing in the bathroom? Yes, indeed. <laughs> this ought to be a lesson to us, Miss Jones. Tell the truth. truth. <laughs> Listen to me, early forties. <laughs> I'm forty-four of them a day. <laughs> really? I'll never see thirty again. Yes, quite. <laughs> Plain, ordinary, and on the shelf. Oh, and of course you're not, Miss Jones. You're very attractive. The most attractive woman here, I'll tell you that. Well, I think you are very attractive too, Mr. Oh, Rixby. Very nice of you, Miss Jones. You think so, Miss Jones? Yes, I do. You know, some people have got it and some people haven't. And you've got it, Mr. Rigsby. Trouble is, I never seem to get much chance to use it, Miss Jones. <laughs> no, I can't believe that, Mr. Rigsby. I find you a very stimulating companion. Do you, Miss Jones? Please call me Ruth. Oh, do you, Ruth? May I kiss you, Ruth? Yes, Mr. Rixby. Oh, Mr. Jones. That's him, the beast. He's about to strike again. How are you doing? Oh, You're the third woman he's molested in an hour. Mr. Rixby. I can explain, Mr. Jones. I'll see the fury. Get out of my car. Get out of my car.